things that I need to say tonight. And God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you because you are God. And we thank you for giving us the tenacity that we need to do the work of ministry. We thank you because you've made us a strong tower. We thank you, Lord, because you've taught our hands how to do battle. And you've allowed our feet to be sure-footed in you. And so because of that, I thank you and I appreciate you. I appreciate you for giving us an audience with you tonight. I appreciate you because you want to talk to us and we're here to hear you. I thank you tonight, God, because I'm not the speaker, I'm the hearer. Thank you, Lord. I'm not the speaker, I'm the hearer. You are the speaker. It is you that gives my lips mobility. I'm not the speaker, I'm the hearer. And my lips can only speak what I am hearing you say. And so I'm lending my ears to you that you have created and I'm yielding them to you tonight. And I want you, God, to download from heaven what you are trying to say to us. Because we didn't come for entertainment, we came to be changed. All of us came to be changed. Every last one of us came to be changed. None of us want to walk out of this building the same. And we thank you for it right now. And we thank you because you tapped us on our shoulder and you brought us here. We thank you because you didn't let us miss coming here. We thank you because when you told us to get in our cars and get on the plane and get on the bus and the train to come, our spirits heard you even if our flesh wasn't willing. And so we thank you for being spirit led. And we give you glory. We give you glory. And I just need the people of God to just give him glory before you take your seats. We give you glory. We give you glory. You may take your seat. I'm not going to try to prolong the time because Dr. Lloyd, this won't be my last time here. Amen. Amen. I just like you. <laughs> Won't be my last time here. If I can get on the plane and go to other ministries for six months in a row every month, I can do it for Lafayette too. can do it for Lafayette too. So Bishop, you and I are going to be praying and when the Lord says when, when the Lord says when, we will get on our six months journey. I feel something in this region. I feel something in this region. And the reason why I know that to be so is because, put some treble on it please. I have it on seven Jerry. Because the enemy hates when God is getting ready to do something eternal. The Lord is not in the process of touching us anymore. Somebody said, I got touched by the Lord. But I'm learning in this new journey that I am on that the Lord is not touching us that's not his goal his goal is to the touch of the Lord is not and please hear me and I'm going to try my best to take my time and just the portion that I'm going to release tonight I'm very 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 sensitive I'm very sensitive because now I've seen on every hand from a week ago with me coming here why the enemy did not want me to be here. I can see it and I know why. The spirit that is moving in the earth realm on your life 
is not a new spirit. It is an ancient one. It is the spirit of the ancient of days. It is an eternal spirit that is choosing in this hour to make himself manifest to a people that are under the onslaught of the enemy. It's not even something that you have to pray for. Yeah. It is something that you are entitled to yes, yes. when you get to this level of warfare. Yes, Come on now. Yes, yes. 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 Your warfare merits you a different mantle. Yes. And that's why you can't get mad when the enemy is raging. Because in order for the presence of the Lord to come and sup with you on this level, you have to have a certain level of warfare. It took Jesus himself to confront Satan. When he was walking the earth realm, and he was about to be attacked by the onslaught of the enemy, the enemy didn't come to anybody else, he came directly, Satan himself. He said, I'm not going to send an imp, I'm going to Jesus myself. And I'm going to try him. And I'm going to see if he is really the word. I'm going to see, will he react to my activity? I'm saying this for a reason. And the Bible said that after the enemy had finished his circle of warfare, then heaven came down and sent ministering angels to minister to Jesus. Tell somebody you about to be ministered to. Tell somebody on both sides of you, you about to be ministered to. Tell somebody there's a circle of warfare. I'm walking around this table as an example. There's a circle of warfare. The devil just can't keep going on and on and on and on and on. There's a cycle that he must walk. And when he has finished the cycle of what he is doing, then ministry will come to you. That's the reason why I got on the plane when all of the warfare came. I said, no, this is a cycle. And when this cycle is over with, these people are going to receive from the Lord. And as you grow in God, you learn how not to adhere and not to fall apart in the middle of the cycle. When I was on my way here about a week ago, I had a demonic encounter and the spirit came through my window. And I know people say, well, your own spirit came through your window. No, I'm talking about a real devil. Came through my window. One of the most fierce spirits I had seen in a long time. And that's when I knew that I was getting ready to embark upon a city that the enemy didn't want me in. And I mean, he was raging. I mean, he was raging. I'm talking about raging mad. He was angry and I sat there on the couch and I watched him outside of the window, 20 something floors up, I was in a hotel and I watched him, hand and feet. I've never seen a spirit that had nails that long on his hand and his feet. And he was, he was raking like he was trying to, to, to come at me, but he could not. And I looked at him and I said, the blood of Jesus, because whatever you came from, because what the enemy tries to do is, he tries to attack you with fear. Well, oh, I just said something right there. He tries to attack you with fear. But you have to know that the word says, for I have not given you. If you got fear, I didn't give you that. Whatever the Lord didn't give you, you have the authority to rebuke and break. I did not give you fear. I have never gave you fear. I'm not hearing nobody talk. I said to you to fear not. I said to fear not. 
So when you feel the spirit of fear coming upon you, whether or not you've been saved 10 days or 20 years, you have authority instantly to rebuke the spirit of fear because God didn't give me this and I know that this is of the devil. Somebody said fear, fear is of the devil. Say it again, fear is of the devil. Do I begin to rebuke it? By the time I got home, I think it was Sunday, I woke up and I started feeling, how, I don't know if you've experienced this before, intercessors probably have, Pastor Carrier, you, you probably have, Bishop probably have, where you could feel the enemy around you. You could feel his presence. You could feel, it's almost like you walk it and you could feel his presence. And you know that you got to be careful because you got to be careful. And when I say careful, you got to be careful. You got to really be careful. If you say, I'm getting ready to go to the store, you got to walk. You got to wait. You got to go and sit down in the kitchen and say, okay, is it time for me to go to the store? Because I feel you raging. I feel you all around me. I feel you ready to step in and wage your attack. So I was still, and I went to minister on Tuesday night, where I've been ministering at a church for, so it was supposed to be eight weeks, and now it's been 14 weeks. And I was ministering at the church. When I got done ministering, I felt something come down on me, and the Lord said to me, don't change your clothes. I left the church with my robe on, like I got on now, and I went and got in my car. When I got home, I could barely take my robe off before I collapsed on the couch. And I felt something jump me where it felt like the enemy was trying to twist my face, like twist my whole neck. And I began to plead the blood. I called for the intercessors and I said, I'm up against an attack, but I know that this attack is not against me. It's because of where I'm about to go. And I know that. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. No, 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 no. The devil didn't just let me walk in Lafayette. It was a battle to get here. No, it was a battle to get here. It was manifestations in my sleep. It was manifestations in my body. I got pictures where the devil was trying to twist my face. I know what I'm dealing with in this atmosphere. And I know the devil did not want me to come in this place because God told me, even if you don't preach, if you walk your body into that building, I'm going to start a deliverance in that region that we will not stop. I don't think you get what I'm saying to you. That means your loved ones are being affected by this meeting right now. I said your loved ones are being affected by this meeting. I had to pull out my big guns. I had to call on major people that have battled with death. I said, I need you to pray for me. I need you to get on the wall for me. Because this one is not easy. What I do is bigger than walking up to a platform and getting a microphone. That's glamorous. That's called preaching. I'm not a preacher. I'm called to be a deliverer. And there is a difference. What you don't understand is that everything that I'm saying now is shooting through the fibers of this building. It is going into the atmosphere. I don't think you understand something right now. There are ministering angels that are being released because I am here and I'm supposed to release them. I'm supposed to charge them. And as I stand in this building, no matter what I feel like in the physical, I am charging angels to go all over this city. They have landed a spirit of revival in this city. 
Sit down, let me read something. The audience is in my mic. Mere preaching is information gain. Mere preaching is knowledge. I'm getting ready to say something here. Say it. Knowledge is information gained. Anybody that's gone past the third grade can read. And if you can read, you're gaining information. You pick up the Bible and you read the Bible, you are gaining information. But let me break down the difference. If you read, Jesus wept. In the natural, you're able to comprehend that he cried. But when it is revealed to you what the depth of the scripture means, it means that those tears contained enough power to snatch me out of the hand of the enemy. So did he just cry? Or did he snatch me from somewhere? Good Lord have mercy. Oh my God. So when you have information, people of God, please hear this. It's information gained. Knowledge is information gained. But that's why the Bible said, Lord, by getting, get understanding. Because what is understanding? Understanding is to perceive the intended meaning of words or a language or a speaker my God when I have understanding then I know the original intent of what God was saying about me when I have understanding oh my God I know what he meant from the beginning so the reason why I'm able to to overcome is because I'm not looking at what I see now. Because I know what his original intent was when he called me by my name. In other words, I don't have to succumb to what I see. I don't have to pay attention to what I see. I don't have to acknowledge what I see. Because I'm not a person that just have information. I'm a person that have understanding. When I have understanding, I know his original intent for me. And his original intent is not for me to fail. It's not for me to be defeated. It's not for me to have life. He said, I know the thoughts that I think of you. And they are good and not evil. I'm here to give you your expected end. When I have understanding. I can perceive. I didn't come to make you shout. I came to help you, not hype you. Help us. Help us. As a matter of fact, next month I would have been preaching for 40 years. I know how to preach in my sleep. I don't think I need to convince anybody in this building I can preach. I've been preaching for 40 years. Started preaching when I was 16 years old. Ran my first revival at 16 years old. I'm 56 now. I've been preaching a long time. But what I won't do anymore is preach real fast and the people don't get nothing. It's preach real fast where they can where they can shout on it, but they can't live by it. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. To understand that the Bible said that man cannot live by bread alone. But the only way that you're going to be able to live and survive, you got to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which means the speaker got to be hidden from God. Because they can give you a lot of words that can't keep you alive. I'm out to keep you alive. 
I'm out to keep you alive until you get your promise. People backslide, people die before they get their promise. Because you can't live off of shouting. You cannot live off of shouting. You cannot live off of the choir. I'm not giving you. You can't live off the happy sayings and slap your neighbor and tell your neighbor this. No, you got to live off the word of God. You got to live because the word penetrated my spirit. And it's in a place that the devil can't take it. And no matter what I'm going through, I can hear that word come up out of my belly when I need it. perception is key I got to be able to to read the word but perceive the word good Lord have mercy I got to know how to how to how to perceive it in a place that is untouchable from the enemy how do you think I made it I didn't make it because people liked me I didn't make it because somebody wished I would and I didn't make it because somebody thought I couldn't. I made it because the word of God penetrated in a place. And guess what? The word never gives up. No matter what happened, the Bible said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall forever stand. If God has ever spoke a word over your life, it ain't nothing the devil can do about it. I can't get nobody to praise God right there. I can't get nobody to praise God right there. I can't get nobody to praise God right there. That's a good place to connect with the word. I said if God has ever spoken a word over your life, I don't care what the devil is doing right now. I don't care what he's saying. I don't care what it looks like. It is going to come to pass. Jesus. I'm getting ready to tell you how in a minute. I'm getting ready to come and tell you how in a minute. The Bible said, the Lord said, put me in remembrance. Not that God has forgotten, but God want to know, have you forgotten? Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Which means you're going to have to put him in remembrance when you don't feel it. You're going to have to put him in remembrance when you don't see it. Oh, y'all, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because you wait for good times to tell God about it. But God said, no, you got to keep on coming back like the woman with the unjust judge. You got to worry, God. You got to look up, and every time he look around, you at the foot of the throne of God, saying it's me again. And this is what you promised. Tell somebody he promised me something. No, y'all ain't saying that. Look, y'all mean that. I said, tell your neighbor, he promised me something. And tell him I'm not just in here jumping and shouting. I'm in here. I'm in here so God can charge the word that he gave me. Because the word got to be put in the presence of the Lord. That's the reason why we're in here tonight. We are in here tonight so the glory of God can jump on that word and bring it back into activation. Y'all sit down, because I... Woo! Tell somebody he can really stabilize you. Now, I'm talking about stabilization. I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about the Lord giving me to encourage you. There's a difference between being encouraged and being stabilized. When you're stabilized, it's something that God does with the word that is in you, that it becomes unshakable. Uh -huh. Unshakable to the point where you start looking like a fool because you keep on professing it and you won't shut up about it. I'm not here nobody to talk to me. Can't nobody convince you to change your mind. Hold up, I shut that up, oh Shia. Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 let me explain to you what I'm talking about. I was telling the people last night, if you weren't in here, I was telling them last night about a girl that I was praying for. And so when you have, when you have knowledge, you have information. Now let me show you the difference of how information can trip you up. <laughs> let me show you how sometimes information can trip you up. I was praying for her because last Easter, with this past Easter morning, she collapsed on the floor. So they took her to the hospital. And the doctor gave 
gave us information. I said, what did the doctor say? He said, the doctor said she's going to die. And the doctor said that one out of every 100 people get this blood disease. And God, God began to talk about it last night and he said, tonight I want you to tell the story so people can understand the power that's in them. Good Lord, have mercy. See, it all depends on where you want to live. It all depends on where you want to live. Now, if you want to live in a basement with some of your friends, and if you want to live low-minded with some of your friends, then I'm not talking to you tonight. But see, I believe that the spiritual warfare has gotten to the point that God is going to command that the people of God come up to a certain realm so that we can be in the realm of supernatural knowledge. Stuff that you're not supposed to know. God is going to reveal it to you. Things that you thought you could never do. God is going to show you how to do it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Because we seem to think that the supernatural is just so that people can get out of wheelchairs. But the supernatural is having the divine thoughts of God to be downloaded into your brain and calling you to walk in a supernatural place. I said, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? They said, it's a blood disease. I said, okay. So we start praying for the blood disease. We start praying and asking God about the blood disease. And I started rebuking it. And I called a couple of days later and they said, there's no change. By the fourth or fifth day, they called back and said, the doctor said, we're going to put her in a coma. Hallelujah. Somebody getting ready to get some hope. said we're going to put her in a coma because she's going to die. And right now, we want to keep her out of the spirit of fear and let her go peacefully. Huh. Give a word, and the mother said, she told the doctor, before you do that, now here's the key right here. She said, before you do that, I got to call the prophet. Yeah. See y'all. You hanging around with people and you ain't got no profit in your life. Something is wrong. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I said, if you hanging around people and everybody around you, ain't nobody got no prophetic anointing in their life. If I was you, I would run for my life. Because the Bible said, and God will do no thing. Which means he will do nothing except he first reveal it to the prophet. He preaching. He preaching right there. I will do no thing. I'm not talking about jack leg prophets. Because if you still prophesying housing cars, you you in the wrong era. Because ain't nobody prophesying no housing cars. We're talking about dimensions. We're talking about levels in cars. We're talking about realms in the spirit. We're talking about how to change the era of the entire city. We're talking about changing the city upside down. We're talking about changing the world. We're talking about changing the White House. I can go to work and get my own car. I can go to work and get my own house. And if I want both of them, I can work two jobs. I don't need a prophet to tell me about a car when my family is in trouble. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. But prophet, if you don't understand, you don't understand, they gave me my address. They told me my phone number. Well, why they gonna tell you something you already know? You already know your phone number. You already know your name. But do you know how to get George out of the bar? Do you know how to get Carol off of the pole? I'm not giving nobody to talk to me. Do you know how to try a crack cocaine? That's all the Spirit of the Lord told you about me? I'm going through hell right now. Sick in my body, my family's sick. My parents ain't even saved. My 
sisters and brothers is out in the street. Half of my brothers is in jail. And that's how God showed you was my address. That's how God told you was my phone number. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all better come over here and say something. The church better come over here and start maturing and get on some meat and get off of this milk. I'm not here. Because see, something happened. If you drink milk too long, it start rotting in your teeth. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, y'all sit down. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't want to go out there like that. Now we don't take we having a move of God unless somebody unless somebody prophesying to you. When I remember back in the day, the move of God is when the presence of the Lord would come in and prayer was supposed to be 15 minutes and it would last nine hours. I remember when the move of God was people being knocked out under the power of God in their seats, getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and ain't nobody laid hands on you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I remember the move of God being what the pastor couldn't even preach. Where the preacher couldn't even preach. Where the praise team couldn't even sing. I'm not here, nobody. I'm talking about the real move of God. Let me get back to this. Let me get back to this. I said, well, what is it? She said, we're going to call the prophet first. And the doctor said, who? <laughs> she said, there's a woman that hears from God for my family. And we're going to call her and see what God is saying. She called me and she said, God told me to call you, prophetess. She said, the doctors want to put her into the coma. She said, what do you think? I was laying down, I got up, I said, give me a minute. I got up and went over to my, to my desk. And I sat there just like this brother sitting with his hands. I sat there, I said, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Yeah. Huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, prophetess, are you there? I said, yes, I'm hearing from God. Wait a minute. Now see, when you live a jack -like leg life, you got to go fast three days. There's going to be some stuff that come. You ain't got time to fast. I ain't telling nobody to talk back to me. Come on. There's going to be some stuff happening that people going to be depending upon your answer. There's going to be some life and death situations. And that's why you got to live rapture ready. You got to live rapture ready. You got to live with holiness already operating in you. You ain't going to have time to go and run and get saved. You ain't going to have time to go and run and repent. You ain't going to have time to go and run and get rid of that and get rid of that. You got to walk circumspectly. You got to walk as if a person in his second needs to contact heaven. And heaven needs to respond to you. Who am I talking to? We don't have the time for no more delayed reactions. I said, I'm hearing from God. I said, give me a minute. She said, yes, ma'am. I said, the Holy Ghost said no. I said, go back and tell the doctor no. You're not going to put her in a coma. I said, God said she's going to live. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't screaming. I wouldn't yelling. I was, matter of fact, Bishop, I was whispering. I said, God says she's going to live. Because I was hearing, I was hearing him talk to me. He talks to me in my left ear. I was hearing him. He said, she's going to live. I said, the Lord says she's going to live. I said, and the Lord said, not only is she going to walk, she's going to run. Wait a minute. That woman began to rejoice as if she was telling me my daughter just jumped up and started running. See, that's the difference between somebody that believed the word of the Lord and somebody, oh God, have mercy. When you know that God is giving you a word, you got to respond as if you already got it. Because the minute he said it, it is a fact. It is not a myth. It is not something that is going to happen. It is something that has already happened. I can't get hard to nobody to agree with that. Mm -mm. I 
I said, he says she gonna run. And I, get, I just sat there and I said, I said, they're going to try some new medicine. They haven't tried this medicine before. And I said, and at first the medicine is going to make her sick. I said, then the medicine is going to begin to work. I said, but a heavy set woman is coming in the room to administer this medicine. And this lady is going through something. Now, at this point, this girl is talking like this. Because she's dying. I said, and your daughter is going to raise up and give this lady the word of the Lord. I said after that, now, you spirit of death. And I went, I want you. And she started throwing up immediately. She was throwing up the white foam, the foam that's an indication that all of your insides have already shut down. They just waiting for you to close your eyes. It's the foam that come out of people's mouth when they die. I, I, are you hearing me? I said, Death, I want you. And she began to throw up. Her mother said, white foam is everywhere. I said, because the spirit of death is going. I said, it's going right now. I said, the spirit of death is going right now. She kept throwing up. I was on the phone for about an hour. She kept throwing up. I hung up and called back a couple hours later. She said, she's still throwing it up. I said, okay, it's almost done. I said, now, put me on the speakerphone. Because see, sometimes when you walk in a land with God, you're not ashamed to say, listen, listen, I don't care if you think I look like a fool. I know who I'm communicating with. Because see, that's what's wrong with some of y'all. You would have been had a miracle, but you always want to think about what somebody going to think about how God is using you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because the Bible told me that God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. And sometimes you got to look like a fool for a miracle. Sometimes you got to look like you done lost your mind for a miracle. Sometimes you got to shut your ears to anything that anybody on the outside has to say because you in a realm with God. I said, put me on the speakerphone. Her whole family was in there. Sisters, brother, daddy, everybody. I said, can everybody hear me? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, she gonna live. Now, I'm calling for four ministering angels. And I said, and I want you to come into that room now and stand in all four corners. I said, and two of you, I want you to dip your sword in the blood of Jesus and stand at the door. I said, I want you to, see how some of y'all looking at me? I said, I want you to pull your sword. And I don't want you to put them back in the sheath. I said, and I want you to stand on both sides of the door. I said, and if a spirit come across this threshold that's coming for her life, I want you to take their heads off. I said, do you hear me? So I can imagine all of them is in the room looking at each other like, well, what is she talking about? I said, because a spirit of death is in the hallway. I said, he came out, but he did not leave the hospital. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying tonight. Y'all ain't here. And so she said, all night long, she said, it was a presence that was in our room that I could not explain. The very next night, she said in the middle of the night, she went down the hallway and told the nurse, I got to move my daughter out of this room because it's cold. The nurse said, well, let me come and see. She said, the nurse came in there and said, well, it ain't cold to me. She said, but ma'am, it's cold and my daughter is shivering. The nurse said, we're not going to move her. She said, no, I'm going to push this bed out of this room because my daughter is cold. The nurse said, well, all right. She said, I'll move her with you. They moved her down the hallway, about four doors down across the hallway. I told the angels and go with them. I said, stay at the door with your sword drawn. That night, they're in that very room. They put another person in there and they died. I'm going to tell you right now that the believers have an authority with God that we don't use. We walk around letting the devil wreak havoc in our house, in our minds. But the devil is a liar. 
said, is she moving? But no, ma'am. I said, what's she going to? Amen. She said, well, right now she can't move nothing from the neck down. Everything is paralyzed. A day later, she texted me and said, the nurse just walked in, the nurse that you described. She put in the medicine inside of her tube. And Angel woke up out of her sleep and said, lady, what's your name and what's wrong with you? Like she was in a trance. The lady looked down and said, told her my name. She said, well, a couple days ago, my daughter started having seizures. She said, God said your daughter is healed. And the woman broke down. I said, now if God showed me the nurse and God showed me her putting the medicine in, then God showed me she was going to walk up. He's not going to do half of it and not do all of it. If God showed me, no, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because there are times that God is going to let you have a peep at your deliverance. There is time. God going to let you have a glimpse of your freedom. Because that's the bait that you got to use to pull your family to victory. Who am I talking to right now? You don't stop. You stop pulling. My God. My God. My God. My God. I said, okay. She said, okay, prophetess. I said, all right. She said, Day, she fell in shock waves. She called me back and said, they want to they wanna move her to another hospital. She said, but they said it's real dangerous because she's in critical condition. I said, she's going to be all right. I'm calling the angels. I said, hold on a minute. I said, I need y'all to go with this, with this ambulance. I want y'all to surround the ambulance. And I want y'all to get her to the other hospital safely because it's not the will of the Lord that she would perish. I'm holding you responsible. Head up, Oshanda Messiah. Head up, Oshaya. I'm holding you responsible if anything happened to her. I said, I'm telling you right now. I said, I said, protect her. The mother said they got her body inside of the paddy wagon. The ambulance pulled off. She said, but when the ambulance pulled off, I was led to ride the front of the ambulance. She said, I got up in the front seat. She said, when we got almost halfway there, I turned around to the man and said, sir, my name is Miss Des Royce. What is your name? He said, Gabriel. I said, you better believe it. No, you don't hear me. now. What is the likelihood that the driver's name is Gabriel? I'm not giving y'all talk to me. I said, God, in this last hour, he's going to put clothes on angels. Who am I talking to? She called me back and said, Prophet, should I believe it? I said, you better believe it. I said, you better believe it. So I said to the Lord, this thing is taking too long. It ain't breaking. I said, you told me it was going to break. It's taking too long. Taking too long. I went to preach that Tuesday night, came home in my robe. I've done that several times. I got in the house and I started walking back and across the floor in my robe, back and forth. I said, you're trying to reveal something to me. I said, what are you trying to say to me? Back and forth. The Spirit of the Lord said, it's not a blood disease. I said, okay, God. He said, the reason why you're not seeing a breakthrough is because y'all praying against the wrong thing. Somebody, somebody didn't even get what I just said. And so then I'm going to say it to you. The reason why you ain't getting no breakthrough because you're praying against the wrong thing. The reason why you're not getting a breakthrough is because you're buying the wrong thing. The reason why you're not getting a breakthrough is because you're praying in, the, in, in, listen, you praying in intercession about the wrong results. You got to sometimes step back and ask the Holy Ghost to download and reveal to you what is a hidden thing that the devil don't want you to see. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Do you think the devil going to show himself at face value? No, he's going to show you a manifestation, but you got to go in the spirit and find out what demon is working this manifestation. He said, go to the computer. 
sat down in my chair in my robe and I said, what am I looking for? He said, look up paralysis. I must have went to 30 different web pages. And one I hit, and it was all the way over in a corner. And the words were very, very tiny. But it was as if God magnified. He said, click that. When I clicked that, it was every symptom she had. I jumped up and started screaming. We found the thief. See, somebody here don't know nothing about that. You don't know that when you locate the thief, he got to pay you back seven times. Hey, come on, somebody. See, it's one thing when the devil do something, but when he hide himself and he's trying to steal something, I'm not giving you. If you locate him up, you get a sevenfold return. Who am I talking to right now? Y'all better open up your mouth and praise God, because I feel miracles in here. we found the thief she said what you talking about I said I said go back to the doctor tell the doctor that the prophet said that it ain't no blood disease it's a brain stem stroke and retest her again I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because what y'all don't realize is that God can tell you what the doctor don't know oh my shut that my son God can tell you what the lawyer don't know God can tell you what the teacher don't know they say one thing about your child but God can reveal to you where the thief is hiding who am I talking to that very night when I got on the phone and I spoke that and I called that demon out her hands went up her mother said her hands just moved I said because when we locate the thief he cannot stay What do you say? He said, you're going from, you're going from understanding. Watch this. You're going from knowledge, information gain, to understanding. I perceive the original intent. I ain't saying that. Let me help you with something. When the Bible said, in all that getting, huh. get understanding. Because there is a way. Help me, Holy Ghost, say this. There is a way that right now, in this building, this very second, you can restore your life back to the way it was before the enemy ever touched it. Now I ain't hear nobody talk to me because y'all think I'm crazy. Y'all think I'm crazy in this building, but I'm not. But I'm not. But I'm not. Because the Bible said, whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. See, see, watch this. The reason why you're still walking in the results of your mistake. You're still walking in the results of what you missed. You're still walking in the results of they fired me. You're still walking in the results of that. Because your mind now is in a cycle of defeat. But the minute you take your thoughts back and you begin to think about yourself based upon the original intent of God. I'm not getting nobody to talk to me. Then the scripture must be lying that says, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the pirate worm have eaten. That means I'll give it back to you. I'm not, if you dare to believe God, who am I talking to? My God, I'm talking to somebody. Hold the music because I need to praise God. I said you can restore yourself back. 
somebody say, how do I do that? Because you're going to praise God from the original intent of God. You're going to praise God. You're going to go back and get your prophecy. You're going to go back and get what he showed you. You're going to praise him based on what he said about you. Somebody give him a shout now. game I get understanding because now I can perceive that this is not what I am not what he intended for me to be so watch this people of God if you are not what God intended for you to be you will never be able to embrace the truth about God because you walk as a lie. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me like that because everybody, everybody just, just, just left the building. I said, I said, if the Lord told me that I am to walk in prosperity, if the Lord told me that I am to own my own business, if the Lord told me that he has given me the wisdom and the knowledge to own my own company and I'm working at McDonald's, I can't hear no more truth because the truth that he's already given me, I'm choosing to walk in a lie. See, that's the reason why you got to put your clothes on and act like you're going somewhere. If you ain't got a dime in your pocket, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. That's why you got to go home and throw out all the rackety furniture and say, before I sit up in here with a dump, I will have nothing in this building because I'm not going to project a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I preaching to right now? No, you got to stop yourself. I know when the Lord gave me this word let me say this to you when the Lord gave me this word I was driving a little car that I bought and it was a little boat, uh, boat wagon and the Lord stopped ministering to me about, see there's a difference <laughs> There's a difference when people tell you who you are and when God tells you who you are. Because when people tell you who they are, they think they can control who you are. When God tell you who you are, you out of the hands of the, come on somebody, you out of the reach of man, you do what you want to do. I can walk here because God told me to. I can walk in this because God told me that I can. I'm not here nobody talk to me. Don't nobody rule but the Lord. Don't nobody run nothing but God. The Lord said, I put up one and I take down another. The Lord said, it is me that decide. And favor ain't fair. I'm not here nobody talk to me. But once you get it, can't nobody take it from you. You better come over here and give God a praise right now. The Holy Ghost said, I gave you favor. And can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody shut you down. He said, there are billions of people all over this world. Because you don't preach in somebody's church don't mean your ministry is over because I gave you the world I told you to go in all the world not to brother Jenkins church he said you going through changes because you in churches and I said the world. Hold on. He said, I said the world. I said the whole world. When God gave me that word, that's when people start calling from Brazil. People start calling from everywhere. He said, these people was already wanting to call. 
but you were stuck in the church you were stuck in the ministry system you were stuck in the politics you were stuck in the fact that if I'm on this stage and that means I'm popular and if I'm not on that stage that means I'm not popular he said I didn't say a stage I said the world and that's what's wrong with people in the ministry I'm not getting nobody to talk to me God is trying to take you to the nations and you acting like God ain't gave you no ministry because somebody ain't asked you to come and preach the devil is a liar let me tell you this right here the reason why I know that there is somebody in this church right now that is going to the world because God ain't called me to preach to nobody but thousands and if thousands is not in here thousands is in one of y'all I'm not here nobody talk to me who am I talking to right now you bigger than you think you bigger than the devil ever want you to know who am I saying this to I came out of the store one time and I was looking for my car. I said, now where did I park? Kept going from side to side. I said, now where is my car at? Where did I park? And then I had to stop. And my spirit said, that's your car right there. I went over to that Toyota Volkswagen. I got in that car. I picked up the phone and called my niece in college. I said, catch a bus. I don't care what you got to do. Come and get this car. She said, auntie, you gonna get me a brand new car? I said, come and get this car. I said, because before I ride in something less than who I am, I will walk. No, I'm not here, y'all talk back to me. Here, y'all talk back to me. Before I live in a dump, I walk. Come on here, somebody. Before I live in a raggedy, broke down apartment, I'll go live with my grandmother. But I'm not going to put myself. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all better open up your mouth and talk in here. Because you better stop professing what you don't intend to walk in. If you profess it, you got to show some action that you believe God. They said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait until God opened the door. Watch this. I'm going to wait till God opened the door back up to my original life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. And I didn't have to play politics to get there. And I didn't have to rub the wrong shoulders to get there. And I didn't have to have relationships with people that I didn't want a relationship with to get there. I got on my face before God and it was the Lord that woke me up out of my sleep and said, today is the day. Get your clothes on and go to the lot. I'm going to give you your car today. I said, all right, let me get up. I got up and I'm going to tell you I did a bold move. I got up and I went downstairs to the basement where my sister was. I said, you need to come go with me. She said, where you going? I said, I'm going to get a car. She said, well, Nita, do you think I need it? I said, yeah, you need to go. I said, the Holy Ghost told me to come down here and tell you to get dressed. And that's the way I talked to her. I didn't say, well, let me explain. I said, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you because I was seeing something on her. I said, God told me to tell you to get dressed. We got we to gotta go and hurry up. Hurry up. She said, she said, well, all right, I don't feel like it. I really, I'm really tired. I said, yeah, I know. I said, well, I'll drive. I, come on, I'll drive your car. You just come on. Come on, we just going to go. I said, the Holy Ghost said, now. I walked out there on the lot, and there's a Range Rover because I used to have two. That was a Range Rover. I walked up to the man. I said, how much is this car? And he said, well, man, we ain't put a price on the car because a lady bought this car. And then she turned around and said she didn't want it. And she turned it back in. She moved into Hawaii. He said, but what we do is we got a credit union over here that we deal with that you got to go over here to. I said, all right. He gave me the lady's name. I got back in the car. I went over to the credit union. The lady, the people said, what's your name? I said, well, I need to buy them. I'm here to see this lady. And she said, all right. And the girl came back to me. She said, what you say your name was again? I said, well, I need to buy them. She said, okay, I'll be right with you. About 20 minutes, me and my sister just sitting there. My sister said, I'm so is tired. I want some coffee. I said, yeah. I said, but God said today. I said, you believe me? She said, Nita, you know, I, I know you don't lie on God. I said, well, God said today. I said, he said, God told me today. So the lady came and she said, you Miss Bowman? I said, yeah. She said, come on in. I said, all right. We both came in the office and I'm sitting there and the lady's typing up something on the computer and all of a sudden, two other ladies come in 
and they shut the office door and they start pulling the blinds down. So I'm like, what is going on? She said, is you the one need to bottom that preach? I said, yes. They said, we've been asking God for a word. We told the Lord, oh, you are sign. Pastor, I got to preaching in that office. I got to laying hands on women in that office. When I got through, that lady said, whatever you came in here for, you gonna get it. Then she turned around. She turned around. No, that wasn't it. She turned around and looked at my sister and she said, what she need? I said, she need a car too. She walked out with an Escalade. I walked out with a Range Rover. My credit at the time was 490. I'm not here. Nobody talk to me. Y'all better say something here. I said when you move in the timing of God, when you move after praying to God, when you walk in what God says, God will do exceedingly and abundantly and above. When I went through my transition, that's what I call it. I don't call it trouble. It was a transition. It was a thing that God ushered. It was, it was a chariot that he used to usher me to freedom. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My credit score was 820. I was a person that always paid my bills. I lived with my bills being paid eight months in advance. I can send you the records and let you see them. I'm a stickler about bills. I can't stand bills. And if you really want to make me mad, just be late paying one. And I really get upset. I said, okay, God. We walked out of here, got these trucks. It wasn't even nine months later, so I'm driving down the street to church. I said, well, I need another truck. <laughs> and the devil said, well, why do you want another truck? I said, because I had another truck, demon. <laughs> Restore don't mean take me from two Range Rovers to a station wagon. Restore means he makes the devil put it back the way it was. I'm driving down the street on my way to church. There's another one exactly like mine, same color, navy blue, same piping. I pulled over, the man said, I said, how much? He said, well, ma'am, uh, an insurance man owned this car and he just turned it in and I'd known him since the day he bought it. And he said, him and his wife is downsizing because he's retired. And he said, I only have a few miles on it. And I said, that's all right. I said, how much is it? And he told me, I said, I said, do you take layaway? He said, ma'am, we don't do layaways. I said, yes, you do. He said, ma'am, I ain't never did a layaway. I said, look, let me tell you something. You're going to take this $4,000 and I'm going to come back in two weeks and I'm going to get this truck. He said, ma'am, we can't do that and I'm just handing the money and walking on out the place. He said, ma'am, ma'am, we don't do that. I called him back two weeks later. I said, I'm on my way back. You still got my money. He said, well, yes, ma'am, you really coming back? I said, I'm coming back in three days. I walked in there and drove off with another one. I said, okay, God, I got two trucks. I got a house in New York that they took from me. I lost seven houses, but this is the one you said you was going to give me back because this was the first one that you gave me. I said, no, I got two trucks. I ain't got no place to park it. What you gonna do? He said, go down here to Florida and preach and lay in this church. And the air conditioner was out in the church. And I, listen, I preached in the church. Got done preaching for four days. Raising the orphan. Gave them every time because God said so. And I walked out of the church and I said, I feel like I'm a millionaire. I said, feel like something happened for me. I feel like something happened. I got back home and two weeks later, there's two Caucasian women sitting there like in the late 50s, early 60s. Two sisters. People shouting all over the church and they just sitting there. <laughs> Most they would do it now, they hear it a little bit. Lady called the ministry and says, this is Juanita Bonham's ministry. My secretary said, yes it is. She said, we was in her service in Florida. They said, okay. She said, my name, and she gave her name. She said, I'm the manager at Chase Bank. Juanita Bonham's house just came across my desk for me to foreclose on it. Tell Miss Bonham I'm giving her back her house, and she ain't got to have no money to pay down because she blessed my life. And I'm going to explain it later to my supervisor, and I live in that house right now. And God made the enemy give me back. You don't know, hear what I'm saying. I said, when you got the wisdom of God, when you got understanding, he would download information that the devil never thought you would get.
So what else is you going to do? You're going to stay on the shoreline with a sick body that God can heal. You're going to keep on pumping medicine for a kidney that God can restore. See, I know, see I'm talking too crazy for some of y'all. I'm talking too crazy for some of y'all. Y'all, y'all ain't saying that. When me and my sister jumped on this bandwagon and we knew that God was real. I'm talking about people calling us saying that the doctors that gave me 48 hours to live. My sister said, put your hand on your stomach. She starts praying in the middle of the night. That lady starts screaming. She said, it feel like I'm dying like somebody is pulling something out of me. She passed out and thought she died. When she woke up the next morning, her stomach was flat as a pancake. She went back to the doctor from looking like she was eight months pregnant and the doctor said the cancer is gone. I'm talking about that kind of God. I'm talking about a God that can speak how you go shaka Messiah and everything in your life can change in an instant. Who am I preaching to? Because I got knowledge and my knowledge goes to understanding, which I now perceive what it is he desires to do for me. You might say, what's wrong with you? I have perceived. Mm. Women come and tell me we're trying to have a baby. And we, the doctor said we can't. I said, come here. <laughs> I wrapped her and her husband, both of them in my prayer shawl. And I said, receive it. When I get back to London, they say, here's our daughter. I can't get nobody to go with me tonight. I can't get nobody to go with me. Because see, when you get, when you get, when you get, when you get, when you get knowledge, information gain, you turn your knowledge into, I perceive what the original intent is for my life. Then your understanding moves you to wisdom. And wisdom is to experience the knowledge. You don't have wisdom until you have experienced, until you have taken the knowledge, watch this, and the understanding, the perception, and you work it. Somebody said, what you doing? I'm walking in wisdom. Are you doing that? I'm moving in wisdom. Why are you over there? I'm doing this in wisdom. wisdom. And wisdom can't be explained. Lord Jesus, I'm done right now because I don't even think people understood what I just said. Wisdom can't be explained. When you start explaining wisdom, you would take yourself back to knowledge. I'm not here nobody talk to me because you would have to cut out the supernatural part in order to get a natural man to understand what you're talking about in the supernatural and before you know it you're trying to explain something to a carnal mind you're gonna go back to understanding when you get back to understanding understanding gonna make you feel like a fool forever standing over here in wisdom now you done lost your supernatural place because you tried to explain to the natural what only God understands in the spirit I can't, I don't know if anybody says, I don't know. I got to go over here and do something. Where you got to go? I'll be back. Sometimes you got to just shut up. I'll be back. Where you going? I'll be back. How you going? What you mean you'll be back? I got to go over here. Tell them that at 2 o'clock in the morning, I drove on and over in the old neighborhood and got out of my car and took off my shoes and walked on the backyard of my house and said, God, you gave me this house and you're going to give it back to me. I didn't tell nobody that I was walking in the backyard of some, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing you talk back to me, but you got to be led by the spirit. You got to ask God, what should I do? Because what he's going to do is going to be supernatural. And then you get to walk in skill. 
And what is skill? Skill is, I've done this before. Skill is, you talk different when you're a person of skill. Skill is, when you stand in front of a hard place and tell somebody, watch God. Nobody say, no, y'all praise is a little over here. Skill, skill is when you're not afraid to say, well, watch God. Now watch what he do right here. Uh-huh, watch God right here. They said, do you know so and so the girl, watch God, watch God. Watch what God came to do with this right here. Well, no, nah, no, no, no. When they come and tell you something and it seem like it's all crazy, you start laughing and say, <laughs> God came ready to get the glory out of this one, baby. Baby, he came ready to show y'all something. I'm not hearing y'all. The saints got to turn their language around. The saints got to know in whom they believe. I'm not hearing nobody talk. You got to talk like you serve God. You got to talk like you I'm not hearing y'all. You got to talk like you know God. You got to talk like you don't shake at the promises of God. You got to talk like you stagger not at the promises of God and unbelief. You got to talk like you standing firm on what he said. Who am I talking to you right now? Who is God talking to? We can't start shaking. The worse it get, the more you rejoice. The worse it get because the devil is trying to show you an illusion. I close with this. I close with one of the most profound things you will ever hear an individual say that God said to me. He said, I am a God, Juanita, a principle. He told me to look that up. He said, principle is the foundation and the nature of which thing is sat upon that causes it to be established. I said, what are you, what are you trying to say? He said, when I, please hear this, when I speak something to you, if I say to you, we're not talking about emotion. He said, if I say to you, victory. He said, I want you to go and look up the word victory. He said, I'm going to show you why man will live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. He said, because every word that I speak contains, now this is him talking to me, we having a conversation. He said, every word that I speak contains its own principle. Victory means to overcome, to gain the advantage of. Victory means to come out as the winner or to be awarded, to be awarded after a race. Did y'all hear that? So then when I'm over here tomorrow and I feel depressed, I'm messing with the principle of the word. Now my foundation is shaking because I have moved myself off of victory and I'm standing on the foundation of shaking. So I'm getting the results of the foundation that I'm standing on because every word has its own principle. So what I got to do, I got to move myself back over here to the victory side. And I got to, I don't care if I'm crying, I got to get back over here within the principles of the word victory because as long as I stay within the confines of the nature of this word, this is what I'm going to get. Now I just said something right there. No, no, don't nobody have to praise God because maybe you didn't get what I just said. Maybe you didn't get what, if the Bible said that the joy of the Lord is my strength, then I got to stay over here in joy 
for strength. Did I just say something? Did I just say something? If God said I'm going to do it, if he said it's done, you can't be over here telling my Lord do it. You got to stay over here with God. I thank you for the victory. I thank you because it's already done. Because as long as you stand on the foundation of the word done, He said, I can't give it to you because you keep moving. I can't give you what I promise because I'm over here in victory. I told you you got the victory. And you over here listening to them saying, I don't know how you're going to do this. And I don't know where you're going to get that from. And I don't know how they're going to work that out. And then you go, and I just know I'm just crying. And the Holy Ghost said to me, what you crying for? Get back over here. You on the wrong principle. You stand on the wrong foundation. I gave you a foundation. As long as you get over here and stand on the word victory, that's why I want you to stay. I want you to stay right here. And when you feel your spirit leaning over to, I don't know if it's going to happen. No, come on back. Come on back. Come on. You feel your spirit leaning over here to my, and I don't know it don't look like it's getting late. And they say about this time tomorrow, come on back. Come on back. Come on back to victory. Come on back right here. Come on back to what he said. I'm done. I'm done. You're going to be able to tell yourself in your car, you're moving. You're going to be able to tell yourself, sitting on your job, you're going to start feeling, you're moving, you're moving. That ain't what he's saying. You just moved away from the principle of what he said, because everything he says has a principle to it. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I said everything he says has a principle to it. If he said he can make it prosper you, if he said he can make it prosper you, if he said he can make it prosper you, then your job is to start looking at magazines. Your job is to start driving down the street and looking in the window. Your job is to go in Neiman Marcus, not Walmart. Your job is to get your mind to another level. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because you over here in a realm that he ain't talking to you. That's not his intent. You done lost your ability to perceive what his original intent is with your name on it. Somebody said you just preached to me. I'm done. Somebody said you just preached to me. When the Lord told me that I started buying town and country magazines and DuPont registries. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And the Lord told me that. I got out of church one Sunday and went downtown to the Rose Royce dealership and stood in the window. I said, I know they got me on camera. Because I was pointing to that and I said, you know what? It's over. It's over. I wasn't even think the Holy Ghost told me the other week, he said, clean out your garage, get ready. Hallelujah. And the people called me. I didn't have to call the people. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh-uh, they looking for my car right now. He said, what do you want? He said, I don't know. He said, I'm a Christian. And you, your name fell in my spirit. And I woke up and called another preacher that I thought knew you. And I said, God told me to call you. He said, I'm part owner of the dealership. What do you want, Miss Bynum? Because the Holy Ghost told me, it's time for you to put me put back in your car. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I said, God will make the devil give it back. You, y'all sitting in here. Y'all sitting and he acting like this is just church this is not church this is a way of living this is a way of operating the physical body is made whole your mind is made whole by the revelations of God your family has changed before your very eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about you leaving here tonight and you ain't gonna have to ask nobody. When you going to church, you gonna leave out of here saying it's already done. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm 
my hand, y'all talk to me. No more talking. Tell your neighbor, no more talking. No more talk. No more asking them when they going to church. No more saying I need to pray for you. No more saying you need to get right. I'm telling y'all, God is going to speak to them, and they're going to start trying to talk to you about church, and you just walk on out the kitchen. Well, walk on out the kitchen. When they say, yeah, how was service? It was all right. It was good. All right. Y'all, y'all praying for me? Yeah, yeah, we're praying for you. Keep on walking. Keep on walking, because the Holy Ghost is going to start tearing them up. I'm telling you, every time I prophesy this, every time I prophesy this, there are major salvations that take place. I'm telling you what I'm feeling right now. I'm telling you what I'm feeling right now. Your relatives is getting ready to start chasing you down. They get ready to start calling you for prayer. I'm not giving you. They get ready to call you from the club. They get ready to wake you up in the middle of the night. Because the angel of salvation had been sent out. The angel of salvation had been released in this place. What you gonna do is get quiet. What you gonna do even when you get in their cars. And they go, I, I, I know you want me to turn this off. No, listen to whatever you want to listen to. Yes, Some sir. Sundays you're going to get up and you may not go to church. They're going to say, what's wrong with you? Why you ain't going to church? I'm all right. Do you want anything? No, I don't need nothing. <laughs> Yo. You still praying for me, ain't you? Yeah. After a while, they're going to start. When y'all having something? Uh, we ain't having nothing for a while. Y'all ain't going to have no singing program or nothing like that coming up? No, no we, ain't, we ain't having no singing program. Yes, you got my name in there praying for me. You know I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna always be there. You know how it is. That, then they're gonna start trying to explain. Cause I'm telling you all right now what the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you. The manifestation of it is here. the head and you're not the tail. Then you can't continue to walk around here like you the tail. When he said you are above and not beneath. And you can't keep walking around here like you under the weather. God said swear your shoulders tonight and get back in your rightful place. Somebody just saying, yeah, I'm going to say it again. He said, square your shoulders and get back in your rightful place. He said, take your authority back from the enemy. He said, tell every lying spirit that has come up against you mentally that the devil is a liar. You know who you are in God. And I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Somebody need to praise God right there. You need to praise God right there. You need to praise God right there. He said, take your authority back. Because what you are waiting on God to give you, he's not going to give that to somebody that's slamming and crying and sliding all over the floor. He's going to give it to somebody that know they right in God. He's going to give it to somebody that know how to stand and give birth to a prophecy. I hear the Lord saying there will be no more abortions. There will be no more miscarriages in the spirit. You're going to hold on to what God is saying. Somebody give him a praise right now. Everybody in this building give God a praise. I said give him a praise. I said give him a praise. Everybody. Everybody give him a praise. We got our rightful place back in God. People in this building came and gave their life to God. People accepted God in this building last night. If you weren't in this building, it was a mass altar call. 
And you in this building right now. He said to me something so profound. He said in their walls, in the book of Nehemiah shall be called salvation. Oh. And he said the walls were built to protect the vision. He said, and they build the distance of the walls by faith. And it said, even though they were small people, they built great walls because they gave God the range of what they were expecting him to do. I read that and then the revelation came. He said, nothing that I give you all to do can be protected without walls. I said, God, what are you, what are you saying? He said, if you don't win any souls to me, you don't have walls. Oh. Oh. He said, what causes me to bless a ministry above measure is when I look out from heaven and I see all the walls that they have built. All the souls. Because he said, a bruised reed I will not break. So look, babies standing with their faces back hand side to side all the way around your ministry God ain't gonna let the devil come and shoot the little baby down so the little baby saints is standing there because they are walls of protection because God ain't gonna let the enemy railroad them I'm not hearing y'all and while we on the inside building up the kingdom of God we constantly getting people saved until we got walls up around everything that God has called us to do and that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper because if you a person that you're interested in bringing people to God then what you got in front of you is walls that means everything your hands gonna touch God is gonna prosper it everything you gonna do God is going to expand it who am I talking to right now that's why souls get to be on your mind when you wake up in the morning when you go to the grocery store when you go to the laundromat when you go to the beauty shop you got to ask God give me an opportunity to win a soul because if I don't, I have no walls. So every time you make an altar call, then you don't have to spend your time doing this to the devil while you're trying to build with this hand and you're trying to knock the enemy off. Somebody said, why it look like you just operating with such peace? Because I got walls. That's why if you're in this place tonight and you don't know Jesus. You don't know him as your personal savior. If I were you, I would not leave this building without knowing him. If I were you, I wouldn't pretend like I think I know him. If I were you, I wouldn't say to myself, well, if I walk down there, they're going to be looking at me. Because when you lay in here and there, we're going to look at you too. Anybody want my Jesus? Anybody want to know him? Anybody want to accept him? Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this, they're coming. They're coming. Anybody want him? Come on. Oh, look at this, look at this. This is why I preach. This is why I preach. Look at this. They coming unashamed. They coming. They coming because they want Jesus. They coming because they want to be.